Tracy, you okay? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm fine. You know, I often come in here of an afternoon and sit by my grand's grave and weep. Same old Tracy. I wish. What are you doing here? I saw about Deirdre in the paper. Thought I could, you know, pay my respects. My own brother couldn't be bothered coming. And you tip up after all these years. Would you come back inside, eh? No. Dad doesn't want me there. Look, I know it might have been a long time, but that doesn't sound like the kid I know. Can't Ken's on next, you can't miss that. Steve, he doesn't care whether I'm there or not. Oh, God, but of course he does. He sent me out to come and get you. You have always been a really bad liar. Come on, Tracy. Who's your told for once? Come on. Oh, um, sorry. Steve, this is my ex-husband, Robert. Robert, this is my ex-husband, Steve. Small world. We'll have to hoover it, though. <laughs> well, come on, then. Where's Victor going? Chill out. I'm taking her back to mine. I'm going to get her some gear to wear. And we're going over to Bill and George's for the party. Huh. Forget it. You've got to get around to Mickey's to get the cash and bring it back here. You've got to sober up, mate. What about the party? The party's over for you, kid. Now move it. Come on. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> Come on, Bethany, now. Stop acting like a big kid, will you? Fine, seeing as though you are so nicely. Come on, get in. One of my earliest and most vivid memories of Deirdre, long before we got together, is when we appeared in a local production of The Importance of Being Earnest in 1974. Deirdre and I couldn't have been more different. Our tastes in food, politics, culture were polar opposites. Well, I drifted away to Chopin, she washed up to the Spice Girls. Deirdre had such presence. I can't tell you how many times I've walked into the Rovers without knowing she's there, before hearing that distinctive laugh and seeing her presence. That throaty, joyous roar of happiness. And I think to myself, well, tea will be a while yet. Deirdre wasn't a woman who wanted to set the world aflame. She was a woman who... <sighs> I don't need to tell any of you this, do I? You all knew her. I didn't really. The fact that you're all here, you represent best of all what Deirdre was. She was a friend, a neighbor, a mother and a grandmother, a confidant when things were bad, and a source of love and laughter when things were good. She was a woman who'd spent most of her life in one street, the linchpin of the community. The role that seems to be disappearing day by day in the modern world. And more's the pity. Dude, you could not understand the appeal of the social media. And if I got involved in some debate on Twitter, she'd look blank. Why do you care what a load of strangers think, she'd say. If I want to talk about something, I'll do it with my mates and the rovers. And I can have a drink then and all. Her family were her priority. And she welcomed each new addition with the same enthusiasm and kindness and patience. 
kind of been easy for her when we first got married and lived with Uncle Albert. And it wasn't exactly smooth sailing when her mother Blanche came to live with us. Not exactly smooth sailing, that's probably the understatement of the century. But to Deirdre, family was family. And that was that. And how she adored her two grandchildren, Simon and Amy, who neither of them had it easy over the years. So with her protection and love, she was able to do what their parents often couldn't and give them the foundations in life that they needed. God bless her for that. Why is it you never truly appreciate anything until it's taken away? Goodbye, Deirdre. Wish I'd been a better husband. And I wish I could hear that booming, life-affirming laugh. Just once more. But as Blanche would say, if wishes were horses, beggars would ride. Goodbye, my love. Please. Afternoon, Mrs. Connor. Afternoon, Dominic. You better just give me some of that lovely money. Ready when you are, Mrs. Connor. So, as far as your mum's concerned, you wagged it and I saw it at the Trafford Centre, right? I'll still get into trouble. Yeah, but I won't for letting you get bladdered. I'm fine now. You're fine when I say you're fine and keep eating. <sighs> yeah. Mum won't let me go on this school trip to Paris. Huh. I don't blame her. It'd be a shame if she found out I spent the day with you in the booze, then. Are you blackmailing me? Imagine the brownie points if her big bad boyfriend pays for a little princess to go on a trip she can't afford. Huh. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our frail bodies that they may be conformed to his glorious body who died, was buried, and rose again for us. To him be glory forever. Amen. Steve, we look after Amy. Why, what's up? I can't face the wake. Oh, Tracy. No, I mean it. I need to be on my own for a bit. Uh, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure. Stay with you, Kim. No. In fact, I'd like a few minutes by myself. Of course. I'll see you back at the Rovers. <sighs> Despite everything. It was only ever really you. 